Okay, this is the Kubrick community meeting for Wednesday, January 26, 2022. We have a meeting uh, link in or the uh, meeting document link in the chat. Um, and we'll see. Oh, good. Somebody's already made the copy. Thank you. So first order of business is to uh, ask anybody who's attending for the first time to introduce yourselves, uh, kind of give name, organization, if any, and uh, what you plan on using Kubert for. Okay, if we don't have anybody standing up to introduce themselves, we can move on to the agenda. Uh, looks like Daniel, you have something on unit tests. You can have the floor. Hello. Everyone can hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Um, just, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure uh, where I should have put this or whether I should have put this rather to the open floor, but yeah, it, it's under agenda and notes anyway. What I was just wanting to, to mention was that we have seen uh, an increase of the uh, testing of the unit testing failures uh, recently, which not only hurts us at the uh, post submit that is running on every merge to the main branch, but also on the PRs uh, uh, where it is failing. It, you can retest it easily, of course, but uh, what, what I've noticed at least from the, uh, from the search um, CI, uh, was that uh, this shows around 20% of all bills is currently failing. Um, this is an older issue, but I just wanted to point out that, that is, this is happening. And um, to be honest, I, I'm not working on it. And um, yeah, I, I think we should just discuss this, how we want to fix it probably, or if we have plans to fix that or, yeah. Yeah, makes a lot of sense to either fix it or at least skip the test in question. Right. Yeah, that was that was actually a question I had because in general, we, for functional tests, we have this uh, recommend or, or this, this line of, I think 10% where the CI is uh, the stable. And when one test fails around 20% of the time, that that's quite an issue, I would say. And I would ask whether we should maybe apply for such tests the similar thing that we do for flaky to functional tests um, so that we would quarantine it and, and um, remove it for the time being or something like that. From my perspective, probably makes sense. Um, I mean, there, but I guess we just have two or three flaky unit tests, something like this. And it didn't really grow or anything. They're just with us for a very long time already. So I, I'm not sure. It, it, in this case, we may get away with just someone taking the time to fix them once. And then we can just not do all the overhead to it, like running the unit tests and periodically also and so on. I don't know. On the other hand, if we introduce this flow, we could probably also get more in, uh, optimize the unit tests more to be faster and have more data points because we, we're not, yeah, we still have issues with, yeah, with these flaky tests to run tests more parallel and so on and unit tests. I don't know. But other thoughts? I the only only input that I can I can think of is that it's more uh, when you skip unit tests uh, in 
versus the end-to-end -end test, it's you introduce a higher risk, I guess, because the unit is also supposed to be more focused on a specific area. And if that is flaky, then maybe the production code is flaky. Whereas in end-to-end -end test, sometimes it's just load or uh, or uh, the CI, uh, the cluster itself is a bit uh, behaving strange. There are more uh, parts that they can get wrong and not your not the production code itself. So it's just risky. I would agree with that assessment. And normally unit tests should be simple enough so that we can fix them in time. But yeah, there are a few of the unit tests which are a little bit hard to maintain. Yeah. And I think this clearly is one of those, right? Yeah. <laughs> So we probably have to look into that area more carefully in general. And, yes. And Eddie, I agree with you that that, um, uh, that the risk um, is increased when you when you try skipping uh, start skipping unit tests. But nevertheless, it is still very annoying to have such um, um, so, so, uh, such flaky tests there somehow. But yeah, I, to be honest, I just wanted to mention it and raise awareness on that. So um, and, and hopefully get someone to volunteer on, on uh, fixing that. Yeah, maybe also just uh, tag a few of the maintainers on this issue and ask them for the opinion, and then we can probably build a quorum on what to do with it, because 20% failure rate is really too much. We need to do something with it. Would you do that, taking a few people there? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that then. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So I think that's everything under agenda. We can move on to open floor if we're ready. I think, uh, Stu, you have the first thing, a uh, follow-up to all things open. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. I was just messing with my microphone because I realized it wasn't actually attached. So, <laughs> mm. Yeah, so this is just a follow up. Uh, the All Things Open conference happened actually mid October, but I realized uh, we never actually shared the recording. So uh, there you go. Uh, proof that Qbert does run on ARM uh, in video form. So if you're interested, check it out. Cool. Is that something we ought to? probably post somewhere on the web page with a announcement or a blog or something. Sure. Okay. Maybe I'll put a hint there. I'll even give that to myself to follow up on. Uh. Okay, Roman, you have the next. Uh, yeah, um, I've just seen that we have a few had a few attempts to update Go and the Kubernetes dependencies, and I think the networking team started on it. And I've seen a second PR, which seems to pick up that work. And I just wanted to ask where we are there uh, in person. Could also have pinged, but since I think a lot of involved people are there, I just wanted to ask directly here. Um, yeah, yes, the, the PR uh, was pushed uh, by me. Uh, it basically um, seems, uh, seems to work. Um, uh, there is maybe some problem with the test because um, sometimes uh, uh, it, the test fails because of the timeout. For some reasons, uh, it seems that uh, uh, resources uh, takes uh, more time to go in a running states and test fail uh, failed because of uh, the timeout. Uh, because of when I try to reproduce it uh, in local environment, uh, it uh, everything uh, seems to go to go well. Uh, I, I really don't know what happening what is happening behind. Uh, maybe is is something related to parallelism. Uh, but really, uh, I don't know. 
Okay, so but this means your PR is the one which we want to take in finally, and you're in it should be in a pretty much complete state, right? Uh, yes, because it uh, okay. includes um, the the other changes uh, um, pushed by uh, I don't remember the name. Perfect. Yeah, then then I'll also follow up on your PR, and we'll also have a look on the test results to see what can be the issue. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have anything else for open floor? Yes. A uh, couple of meetings ago, we was talking uh, about uh, the uh, VM pools, and uh, there was a, a bug. This was fixed. It, um, it's not fixed yet. We have a PR, but it hasn't been merged. So I'll link the PR real quick. Can uh, you put here the, the, the PR? I will link it. Let me, let me find it real quick. Thank you so much. Uh, here. I will put it in the document. So I tried to describe the bug in that PR description. Um, ultimately, the result is that without this bug fix, we run the risk that uh, when we update Qvert, that it will restart all of the virtual machines in a pod, I mean, in a pool. Um, but with this fix, that shouldn't occur. And that's about it. Thank you. Okay, we can move on to uh, pull requests. Please don't go to Kubert, Kubert. Do we have any favorite filters for doing this? I, I haven't really led this before. I have a question. Well, we don't need to go over the PIs. It's only if someone wants to okay. post something that requires review. I think I we, we went. So usually we go by a list that's in the document and there's nothing there. Okay. I hear somebody very faintly asking a question, but I can't hear you quite well. Can you hear me better now? Yes, that's better. I have a question for Roman. I wrote a PR which upgrades Go version to 1.17.5. Uh, do you want me to close it because we are going to merge uh, Federico's so, PR? So this was basically why I asked. So if you two have an agreement, basically, because there are two PRs where one includes the change of the other. So I, I just wanted to ensure to not uh, overlook something and, and just ensure that you had an agreement or something on with which PR to uh, proceed. I don't have any preferences. We don't have an agreement, but I think it's logical that his PR that builds on mine will be merged and mine will be closed. Oh, when that's, if that's fine for you, it's also fine for me. <laughs> so I'll close it, thank you. Okay. Next up is a mailing list review. I'm once again unfamiliar with the task. <laughs> is there something in here uh, somebody would like to bring to the front? Yes, I will um, just briefly do a plug for the um, mailing list post that I posted 
yesterday about defining API graduation guidelines. Um, so I've created a kind of rough guideline documentation for how we should progress our APIs uh, across the Kubernetes organization. And it's not meant to um, be a really harsh guideline or anything like that, as much as it is to kind of um, provide um, expectations for uh, the timelines that we should be uh, kind of targeting for um, the graduation of our APIs and kind of the criteria involved with that. Uh, so we have a lot of APIs that seem to kind of get in this per perpetual alpha or perpetual beta state even. Uh, and we need to make progress with moving those forward, especially um, some of our alpha APIs are effectively, <laughs> sometimes our alpha APIs are effectively GA'd uh, at this point um, because we support them maybe in um, downstream products and they have a lot of production experience and they're stable. Uh, it's just that we haven't gone through the task of actually incrementing those APIs. So this is a rough policy, something that we can all just kind of point to and agree on that this is the criteria that needs to be met for graduation and that we should start uh, making an effort to progress our APIs through this graduation uh, because they, they mean something to people who are consuming them. If somebody sees an alpha API um, in their uh, manifests, that, that leads to questioning uh, the support ability of that API will get deprecated in the future and things like that. But often, um, that's not going to be the case. And so we should go ahead and graduate that API, but we just haven't done that yet. So all that said, that's the document. Um, take a look at that pull request, provide your feedback. Uh, we're just trying to give some rough guidelines here, nothing terribly harsh or, um, or um, demanding here. It's just more of a nice, friendly, here's how we can progress stuff. Yeah, David, thanks for sending that out. I'm, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to send a message uh, to keep Dev uh, sometime today, probably about getting feedback on the snapshot API, which has been in alpha for a while. Um, and yeah, and just potentially, you know, I'll send the mail out and maybe we can um, plan to, you know, discuss it next week in the community call. Yeah, that's actually the one that I had in mind when I was writing this document because here's just, I think it's worth saying. So the alpha API for uh, the snapshot, it, it got delivered in phases where uh, it's a really big project and uh, we had to do things like add the snapshot portion of uh, the phase of implementation for the restore of the snapshot. So it, it came in like some layers um, as we were implementing that, that feature. Uh, so it, it stayed in alpha for a while, and then eventually it got adopted um, downstream by uh, Red Hat. And at that point, it probably should have moved to beta. We just haven't done that yet. I would be in full support of it being beta at this point. Yeah, it just it moved so slowly that we I didn't do a good job of publicizing it <laughs> because what what uses snapshot without restore? And then it was like, well, no one really wants you know to do offline snapshots. And so now we've got pretty full featured um, snapshot implementation. We can do online with um, guest agent, FS freeze integration. And, um, you know, we'd like to hear about people that are using it and get feedback. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Anything else from the mailing list? If not, we could, uh, let's see, we have time to move on to a bug scrub. If somebody would like to help lead that. Yeah. I can help. So, do you want to go to the issues and I'll just help you going through, or should I share the screen? I'm sorry, I just stopped sharing. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and share the screen. Yeah. yeah. Share. Issues. Just. OK. 
can you see my can you see my screen yes great great so the first issue was created five hours ago it says liberty error while loading shared libraries cannot set shared objects permission denied when i go in it says which handler cannot start i just responded a few minutes ago while we were in the meeting and yes it seems like they are having they're creating their own containers and okay i, I will follow up on the conversation there but it seems like they're doing something wrong there i'm not sure but we have to ask what they're doing so we can help them um and they put, put trash needs information there um then we have an issue from Vasily 21 hours ago, legacy container image schema me one manifests break migration. Um, this indeed looks like kind of a bug. So we just recently changed the migration code so that when virtual machines are migrating and container disks are involved that we are pulling on the target node, the container based on the digest, not on tags or moving tags or anything so that you can be sure that on the target node you get the right container as a base. Um, and it seems like when we have a schema v1 container, then this image idea reported here looks like the digest, but it's just an ID and not really the digest. Like what Vasily says. Um, yeah, seems like we have to. Is Vasily on the call? Oh, uh, yeah, but uh, absolutely correct. Yeah. So what do you think? <clears throat> it's so just a question. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Uh, this uh, schema one manifest is kind of legacy stuff. Um, I uh, asked the question in container D uh, or GitHub, and they actually, since they, they are not going to support it. So they do an internal conversion from this schema one to some new format. And therefore, okay. they do not uh, expose the digest. OK, so. so what I can say is that this container disk, which you're referencing here, this Fedora with test tooling container disk, I think mm -hmm. it's very old because we stopped pushing yeah. to latest a long time ago. So it's. Yeah, it's five months something ago, okay. I think. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's so. Is there a way for us to detect which, which schema is used to set something about we could uh, probably use the tag instead? Or? Uh, in theory, we can check the container ID, uh, understand that it's container D. And uh, for example, if the image ID doesn't have the host part, uh, we can fall back to tag. Uh, That's okay. uh, one option. And this something like that. Uh, and they're above the, ah, the container SD is just the idea of the running container, so it doesn't yes. have to be there, right? Because uh, other container runtimes, they kind of handle this uh, normally so tested with Docker and uh, okay. it works. Also, Cryo from, it's used in CI and Kubert, as far as I know. So, so it's I'll only with it. container. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we can decide it in this call. Um, mm -hmm. I think it makes sense to maybe investigate a little bit how common it is that people are using container D and old images. Mm -hmm. um, maybe something writing to, to Kubert dev to see. It's at least for me hard to judge. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm, I just wanted to have it somewhere documented. Maybe uh, if someone also faces this issue, so it's at least can be discussed so, here. I, I would, of course, love to not have to support it, <laughs> but it's not entirely <laughs> new for me, for me at this point. So I'll just, mm -hmm. I put it rather check up there and yeah, have to comment. Yeah, Can actually, the, yeah, the suggestion from the guys uh, from Container D was just to rebuild the image and repush it. That's it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not so easy to have the situation I mean you would you would have uh, migrations in production you would yeah. need, have, need old containers and container mm -hmm. D so it may not be that com common but I don't know container D is I think pretty popular <laughs> overall so 
Yeah. Uh, for, for example, Kant Energy is used in Rancher stuff, so K3S, RK. Yeah. That's basically where, uh, how I've hit this issue, actually. Okay, so. Yeah, maybe you from, from the SUSE perspective have more insights there also from your customers if it's important no. enough. The main issue is just that if we fall back to the tag, we really have no clue if we're pulling the right mm -hmm. image, right? Uh, we, we can block the migration at least. So now it's, uh, oh, let's say, good. just uh, failing. <laughs> but we can uh, add this uh, block condition that's not okay. migratable. Ah, yeah, let me just search. So there are several <laughs> options. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Next one. Mm, yeah, the next one is about a flaky test where we have where we are using vGPUs on different test lanes in parallel, it seems. Nothing we have to go in here. It's already worked on. When virtual machine instance replica set, replica service connects to VNC, two VNC clients cannot clients connect to one VMI replica. Okay. Okay, so seems seems like the the person wants to connect through one service with VNC, but I'm not even sure if we can connect with VNC on a service IP. How is this person creating the service? I don't think this will work because if the selector is uh, across all five replicas, we're just going to get a random replica when we try to connect over that service. Yeah. It won't be the same one consistently. So I'll just write there that if the service spans multiple VMs on the, based on the selector, it, the Kubernetes service should actually distribute the connections across them and let's just see what if this is what they're doing. And let me just put a trash needs information there. Does it look good with the world? Okay, no comments. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, no complaints, Sorry. it works for me. I have to find, <laughs> keep having to find the mute button. <laughs> good. We were. How to execute a guest agent command on QBird is the next one. I want to use QEMU guest agent exec some commands such as set user password. How can I do it? Um, honestly, I am not sure right now. We don't have a kubectl command for doing that right now, right? I don't think so. We only have exec probes based on guest agent.
So they can do that today. That exact example that they have, uh, the access credential API will allow that. Ah, they can set yeah. user passwords. Let me just um, rewrite that a little bit. I don't think that we have a generic. Let me find the link. Command. Let me find the yeah. link to that yeah. user guide while you do that. Yeah. Okay, waiting for your link. Yeah, that's interesting. I document the <laughs> document SSH, but but not the password. I don't think. Let me double check. Did you implement the password one too? I did. Yeah, okay. uh, I can. I can link to the pull request that has an example. Okay, good. I'll do that. That's unfortunate. Will you just link it on the issue or do you share it in chat? I'll, I'll, I'm going to lose that issue. Uh, move on. I'll, I'll figure it out. There's no sense to hold everybody up. I will link it. Well, on a side note, would that be a useful, uh, good first issue for somebody to add the documentation to a user guide? Yes. If it's in fact not in there, it would be. I, I did a um, quick search just based on some keywords, and I did not find it. OK. So is there a method to config the target of live migration? Oh, that's a recurring question. Maybe we can do something about this in general. So what was the question? Uh, if there is a way to influence the migration target for virtual machines. This question comes up pretty often. And we don't offer away right now. What we are, we are just ensuring that Kubernetes is taking node labels, affinities, and all this kind of stuff, which is defined on the VM, into account. And so far, we didn't see a use case which required us to change this assumption. But there can always be something which we're not thinking about. So I also ask here what the person wants to do to see if maybe tackling the person's problem a little bit different will help uh, the person or if we need the feature. VMI, uh, node selectors, affinities, and so forth. This turned out to be sufficient. Could you share? Could you share what you are trying to achieve? So, this information, yeah, looks good, right? Ah, imported. We'll 
working uh, that is not good with you on solution based on implemented flows possibilities okay next one or are there more questions on this one from anyone doesn't seem so so scale word api with horizontal pod auto scaler for better keyword scalability this is something which some discussions are already going on and it's more a developer task not user facing so i'll just keep it as it is right now update the devices of an already started device plugin this issue here ah i think vladik is working on this already with avicic and it be yeah it's we didn't decide anything, but something that I noticed when I was playing around with the device plugin. So. Okay. Um, I think it, yeah, that Vladik uh, discussed this with us already on Slack. Mm -hmm. And let me just see if you can give an update here. Yep. Prometheus REST client request total metric is missing port delete and create events. Marcello, is Marcello here in the call? Or Ryan? David, do hey. you know is this something? Ah, Ryan, is this something handled in in six scale already? Yeah, we've been talking about we've been trying to figure out some um some of our threshold we we'll try to figure out thresholds and one of the problems is we've been trying to figure out how to read our metrics but yeah i have this like, this long explanation in the uh in that comment there but uh yeah we've been we've been talking about this in six count okay then i'll just accept it and write that it will be handled in six scale perfect what else do we have There we have a refactoring issue with a PR assigned already. It's something we can review, but nothing big to discuss. It doesn't doesn't hurt to have oh, that's too much. Doesn't hurt to have something refactored there. Work control uh, data volume storage spec is missing access mode and volume mode. Still nothing happened there so far. Found this volume error when grading DV. Michael Henriksen, are you still on the call? Yeah, Michael, are you still there? No, doesn't seem so. Then let's see. I just asked Michael to have a look. Let me just check. Looks the principal reason reasonable. This end. Ah, test, yeah, image upload. Could be related to Longhorn where something is different than on most other providers. Someone wants to say something? 
I think I faced something similar uh, some time ago. So then uh, in CDI, there is this storage profile. It's a set of default settings for uh, uh, which I use for creating uh, PVCs. Uh, they also include uh, access mode as well. So uh, if the storage provider does not uh, have a default access mode, it can be set in uh, this storage profile and then it will work. So looks like Longhorn doesn't have this default. But uh, I faced it with a, a local pass storage provider, I think, which I used for testing. Okay, then thanks, edit, mm -hmm. and let's see. Good. What else do we have? Uh, native SSH client does not use supplied identity file. And it was even, I was even pinged two weeks ago. Not a good sign. <laughs> uh, looks like, yeah. I, I think I know that this is a real issue and that it's really just that in case you're using the native SSH client that the dash dash identity file file is ignored. We should fix that. Um, what else? This seems to be, this seems to be a duplicate. Okay, I'll just ask if it's a double gate. Because both are talking about identity file not picked up when local SSH is used, and that's the native SSH client. So we'll see. Oh, did it appear trash accepted? Yeah, yeah, I did. Perfect. So where were we? Trash accepted. Searching with launcher process monitor. Searching the VM process by domain spec UID is not reliable. Interesting. Vasily. Maybe you can provide some context. Oh, sorry, yeah, I was muted. Uh, this is related to TPM actually implementation. So uh, when, uh, if you run the uh, libvirt with TPM uh, support, then libvirt will start, will start the software TPM binary and will use the UUID of the VM uh, to create a unique path for the state of this TPM device. And this will, uh, be, will be reflected in uh, prod speeds and the line. And <laughs> basically it's used for searching the VM process. But in the pull request, which adds TPM support, I think it's already handled. Uh, so I tagged this issue there and okay, probably so... it uh, should be fixed there. Seven, okay. Um... I think that one other way to detect the main process would be reading the, there is a, something like a libvirt state file where the main pit of QEMU is also there. So instead of detecting it uh, this way, we could probably read that file, right? But I'm actually curious, maybe not the question for this round, uh, but why not relying on libvirt uh, messages? I think it should report when, uh, QEM process starts, stop, why, why is it needed to monitor it? It's with P, P, or whatever. 
so we have no we have no guarantee about this the tear down order so when the pot goes down mm. liberty oh. can get stopped before qemo and we just want to ensure that you know all our shutdown processes and so on will really mm. exit with launcher if possible after qemo hmm. okay but yeah, we can also think about, we can also discuss maybe maybe detecting it over the state file from Libert, where the process should mm -hmm. be written into. Oh, too far again, so. Network section of docs components, MD is outdated. There is a PR for that already, so. Nothing to look into here. Chill IP. Get the the last one actually looked like a good first issue because the uh, PR was against a single word change in the network docs. And then there was another comment that said, well, this is a good single word change, but the whole section needs to be updated. Oh. I was just peeking into it. Okay. Ah, OK. So it's. Ah, okay, okay, we got it. Okay, okay. Yeah, good. But in this case, let's just accept it. <laughs> it's a real issue, which we still need to address. Um, and you thought it may be a good first a, a, a first task or something, or what did you mean? That, that was kind of the idea that I'd gotten that it's basically, you know, describe the network components, but maybe that is, <laughs> is or isn't a good first task for somebody. <laughs> yeah. If I, if, uh, yeah. When you're new to the project and the documentation is wrong, <laughs> it's probably hard to <laughs> fix it and properly. Yeah. KubeCuttle get VMI, my VMI cannot show a P. I created the VMI, just normally at, normal at first, but after a while, when I used get VMI, it doesn't show the, VM, the P of VMI, but with launch it does. So, what would be interesting here is what VM that is. Oh, CentOS 7. So, Kobe already added something here. I think another, Thing which I have seen is that if an image has the guest or guest agent running and the guest agent stops responding at some point, that the field is also empty, which is probably not correct. I have an issue for that. Let me just ask if the guest agent is running there. So just to be clear, if the guest agent is running and it, it is reporting any interface, another interface, and on a different interface it reports nothing, then, uh, then, then that will uh, be the thing that counts for, for uh, anything that is not masquerade. For example, if you have a secondary network with uh, we have a secondary network and with bridge binding, the interface is bridge binding, then and the guest agent reported some interface, at least one, then uh, and for the secondary network, there is no, no IP seen, then it will override anything that is on the pod, which makes sense because it means there is nothing inside your, inside your guest. Yeah. And uh, that's it. But, but in general, the, the, um, I mean, if there is a specific question about the logic or something like that, you can assign it to one of the people in, in the SIG team, in the network SIG. Yeah. We also, I think we also refactored and maybe clarify the logic a little bit. So maybe we should also document it actually. Yeah. So 
I still think that for the pod network, oh, is it SIG network? For the for the pod network, uh, it's I think it behaves the same because yeah, yeah. I just uh, think for the pod network, we should at least always report the pod IP because it's basically the only choice the VM has. I mean, it may not. No, but it's not it. there. Yes, it's not really there, even not on the pod. It's a, it's a fake. So if you if it's bridge binding, then and and you chose, and you have it on the pod network. It, what we do, we we still we just take the IP from the pod, erase it, and move it. Yeah, and we offer it via yeah, DHCP. I know. But yeah, and if we, if we cannot, yeah, okay. Sorry. But the thing is, if I've seen repeatedly now, when the guest agent has issues reporting something, you just don't see anything, and this breaks then uh, a lot of services on top of Qbert because. The VM has no issues. It has the IP, but um, but just because it's not reported by the guest agent, the field is empty, and then a lot of things break. And it's then sometimes not so easy to fix it. Like for instance, in the Fedora case, there was just an SE Linux issue, so that SE Linux at a certain point with an update stopped block, started blocking the guest agent, and then it's not so easy to get out of this. And for the pod network specifically, it's basically this IP or no IP. And I think it may make sense to always report it in this case. For the general secondary networks which use bridge binding, we don't have an idea what the VM should have at all. So it does not make sense to report there much. Yeah. Edward? So, yeah, so I just wanted to say that for the, um, for, for the case that it is, it is, uh, Okay. If it is if it is a masquerade, then this is not a problem. With, ah, ah, sorry. I wanted to. Say, if it's a masquerade, it's not a problem, right? But in, in what, the scenario that you describe is that if if there is a problem with the guest agent reporting the network stuff in general, then I will expect it not to report any interface. And because it will not report any interface, the, it, this this scenario will not happen because. The only information will be taken from the pod as you expected. Yeah. So it's it should not happen that if it's like uh, nothing is reported from the guest agent in terms of networking, I I mean, then uh, what you said will will happen. Yeah. So that that we should just report the pod IP if bridge is used and it's the pod network. Yeah. Yeah. That what that, will happen today. Yeah, it does not happen today. Today it's empty. Okay. So we, we need to check it. Yeah. Well, let's let's check it out then, because the code says yeah. uh, something, but sometimes yeah, yeah, it's, it's, and uh, it's we have yeah, those it's, it's, I also I think uh, the code I also linked six eight five seven here, where I, where where I reported the two. Like I see, and here I used Fedora thirty five. It has a bug, so that the guest agent can't report networking, but connecting to the guest agent and everything works. So so I would expect that I see this pod IP here because the guest agent doesn't report any networking stuff, but instead it What else? SRV interfaces are not reported correctly when the guest agent has no when the guest has no guest agent. Seems like you're involved already. Yeah, this is there is a PR fixing this. And I'm guessing that uh, in general the the existing PRs that are related to the status Connection. should should so Oh, sorry, I lost the connection. I probably talked over you. I can hear you now again. No, I just want to say that uh, out of all of these changes in the status update of interfaces, I think the scenario that you described should also be fixed because we it was split between uh, virt launcher and virt handler, and now it's supposed to be centralized. It will be centralized in the virt handler, and this scenario that you said should be fixed. I think. Great. So, and I think we are through then.
because seven seven zero four one is something we trashed already, and seventy fifty is already taken care of. Yeah. Thank you from my side. <laughs> I stop sharing. Thank you. Yeah, we're at the top of the hour, so everybody have a good week. Is there anything else anybody would like to raise? I okay, really also I would like to thank you, Chandler, for uh, holding the meeting. Thank you. Indeed, of thank course. you.